It will all begin on one of Britain's most popular tourist resorts, the Canary Islands, with an event that last occurred in 1971 and before that in 1949. A volcanic eruption. The Canary Islands volcano of La Palma erupted for the first time in two centuries menacing the population and turning night into day with blazing rivers of molten lava. People think of volcanoes as being sort of cone shapes with, with a little hole in the top, and those are those are what we call strata volcanoes. They are the traditional volcano shape, but this is very different. It is an elongate structure. La Palma is one of a chain of volcanic islands lying off the coast of West Africa that includes Gran Canaria and Tenerife. Its most active region is a high mountain ridge called La Cumbre Vieja. The Cumbre Vieja occupies the, the southernmost part of the island here and it forms this north-south aligned ridge. The whole ridge is sort of pockmarked with craters and holes and then you have lava flows heading off in, in both directions to the west and the east from these particular craters. In 1949, quite a small eruption in terms of the volume of lava, the volume of magma erupted, but during the eruption there'd been a series of very strong earthquakes and a fault zone had developed along the crest of the volcano. A giant gash had opened up along the island's ridge, four kilometers long and up to four meters wide. Part of the west flank dropped a couple of meters towards the sea and then stopped. And that's really what tells us that something other than just magma coming up was going on during that eruption. That geological rift is the reason why this volcano could one day trigger a mega tsunami. Because ever since 1949, the peaceful island of La Palma has been a time bomb. And some scientists believe that today, another eruption could send 500 cubic kilometers of it crashing into the sea. A colossal landslide, with enough energy to generate the biggest wave humanity will have ever seen. Unleashed not upon the Pacific, but the Atlantic, and heading for us. The first mega-tsunami in recorded history. The terrible human cost of the recent Pacific tsunamis came from underwater earthquakes. But recent history has already shown that the collapse of a volcano could unleash even greater devastation. Most people think of volcanoes as these unchanging sentinels of solid rock that persist for many millions of years and really just go on getting bigger. But they're better viewed really as, as sort of unstable piles of rubble. It was the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980 that really provided us with, with that first visual proof that volcanoes did collapse. This is the only photographic evidence we have for a volcano lateral collapse actually happening. This sequence of photos was taken during the first 60 seconds of the mountain's eruption, beginning shortly after 8.30 on Sunday morning. It was really an iconic moment which, which taught us that volcanoes did things that we, we didn't think they did before, and that is that uh, instead of just erupting upwards, they can also erupt sideways. You can see the, the bulge dislodging, forming this landslide which heads off northwards. 
and then this massive column of ash which heads up into the atmosphere and ultimately covers the entire region. The question we all asked ourselves at the time was, was what would have happened if that collapse had occurred into water? What would happen would be the conversion of a vast amount of energy into an ocean-going wave. Starting off up to a kilometre high, and with the power to cross oceans at the speed of a jet aircraft, ready to make landfall with potentially apocalyptic results.